You have the right to remain silent. These words and the ones that follow them have been immortalized in Hollywood movies and television shows about fictional and real police officers. Today, most people can finish the famous Miranda warnings, which tell you that anything you say can be used against you and that you have a right to an attorney even if you can't afford one. But that was not always the case. In 1966, several cases about police questioning were combined for a blockbuster Supreme Court argument. The lawyers for the defendants asked the court to exclude their confessions to serious crimes. The issue was how the court should apply the Fifth Amendment's prohibition against self-incrimination. And the lead case was that of Ernesto Miranda. Ernesto Miranda, also called Ernie, was charged with the kidnapping of an 18-year-old woman, taking her to a secluded part of the desert outside of Phoenix, Arizona, and brutally raping her. Officers identified Miranda as the primary suspect based on the victim's description of her attacker, the description of Miranda's car, and his prior record as a peeping Tom. They arrested Miranda and took him to an interview room in the police station. Miranda was interrogated for two hours, and he confessed to the kidnapping and the rape. That confession was the central part of the criminal trial where he was convicted and sentenced to 20 to 30 years in prison. New attorneys took his case and appealed his conviction, arguing the confession should not have been admitted at trial. The issue before the Supreme Court was not about confessions obtained through physical violence or threats. The Supreme Court had long-standing precedent against confessions that were coerced, and there was no argument that the police used physical violence to get Miranda to confess. Miranda argued that his confession was inadmissible solely because no one informed him of the rights guaranteed by the Fifth Amendment before they started asking him questions. The Supreme Court reviewed police interrogation procedures and acknowledged that police used various psychological tactics during interrogation, including placing a suspect alone in an interview room and using different questioning techniques designed to get the suspect to confess. The court found that police interrogation of a suspect in custody was inherently coercive. In order to ensure the rights guaranteed in the Fifth Amendment, procedural safeguards were needed, like advising the suspect of his Fifth Amendment protections. These procedural safeguards have come to be known as Miranda warnings. Miranda warnings are not required for every law enforcement contact with a suspect. Miranda warnings are only required during custodial interrogations and only when the suspect knows he or she is being questioned by police officers. Here at Fletzi, we use the mnemonic of the three C's, cops, custody, and questioning. Yes, I know questioning doesn't start with a C, but now you'll never forget it. If you have all three C's, an officer must advise a suspect of his or her Miranda rights. The first C, cops, means that Miranda warnings are only required if the suspect knows he is being questioned by law enforcement. Miranda warnings are required because questions by known law enforcement officers have some inherent coerciveness. A person might feel an obligation to answer a question by a known police officer. So the warnings are needed to inform them that they are not required to speak. The second C stands for custody. Miranda warnings are required only during arrest or where a person's freedom of movement is being restricted to a degree associated with a formal arrest. The court was concerned about the coercive nature of incommunicado custodial interrogations. So not every detention triggers the need to provide Miranda warnings. Consensual encounters, and brief detentions like traffic stops and Terry stops do not trigger the need to read Miranda warnings before questionings. Only detentions that are arrests or detentions where a reasonable person would believe he or she is under arrest require the Miranda warnings. The third C stands for questioning. Miranda warnings are required during custodial interrogations. 
So there must be some type of effort to gather information before Miranda warnings are required. Miranda warnings are necessary only if police are questioning a person. So what constitutes a question? Any words, statements, or conduct that is likely to elicit an incriminating response. Miranda warnings are not required when a suspect makes a spontaneous or volunteered statement that is not in response to an officer's interrogation. Also, routine booking questions are not questioning under Miranda because they are not designed to result in an incriminating statement, even though sometimes they do in fact reveal information that is relevant to the crime. These are the three things that trigger the need to advise a suspect of Miranda warnings. Known cops, custody, and questioning. The Supreme Court determined that when you have these three things together, there is an inherent coerciveness of the interrogation. Advising a suspect of their Miranda rights cures that coerciveness and, according to the Supreme Court, preserves a suspect's Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. If you do have cops, custody, and questioning, what must you advise a suspect? The Supreme Court found that a suspect must be told four things before custodial interrogation. First, that he or she has the right to remain silent. Second, that any statement he makes may be used as evidence against him. Third, that he or she has the right to consult with an attorney and have the attorney present during questioning. And finally, that if he cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent him prior to questioning. Every law enforcement agency in America has their specific version of the Miranda warnings on pre-printed cards carried by patrol officers in their pockets or on written forms presented to suspects in the interview room. Each one states at a minimum these four requirements as required by the Supreme Court in 1966. Any statements made during a custodial interrogation when there are known cops questioning a suspect in custody are admissible only if the suspect has been advised of his Miranda warnings and waive the rights contained in those warnings. So what happened to Ernie Miranda and the others? The Supreme Court suppressed the statements in each of the cases, reversed the convictions, and sent them back to the lower court for retrial. Miranda was retried in Arizona, and his two-hour confession was not allowed at trial. Unfortunately for Miranda, he was convicted again, even without his confession. Based on the testimony of the victim and the testimony of his former girlfriend, who testified that Miranda admitted to the crime when he was in jail, Miranda went to prison once again. Miranda was paroled in December 1975. A month later, he was in a bar in Phoenix and got involved in a fight. A person pulled a knife and stabbed and killed Ernesto Miranda. Police responded to investigate the murder and brought two individuals in for questioning. Both were advised of their Fifth Amendment rights pursuant to the warnings bearing Miranda's name. His murder has never been solved. In 1966, the Supreme Court created the procedural safeguards of Miranda warnings because the court worried that suspects like Ernie Miranda would not know that they had a constitutional right to remain silent during police questioning and a right to an attorney. Today, those rights are broadcast to all through every movie that includes a fictional police officer and every TV show that follows real life law enforcement while they work. Most importantly, every suspect subject to the three C's, cops, custody, and questioning, must be read the now famous warnings that the court announced in Miranda versus Arizona. My name is Patrick Walsh. Thank you for watching this Fwetsy Talk.